Hello, my name is Vince Cerf. I'm Vice President and Chief Internet Evangelist at Google. My topic today is chatbots, uh, sometimes known as large language models. These are systems that have ingested enormous amounts of text that written by human beings, figured out what the statistical properties are of all the text, the words, the phrases, and the things called tokens. Uh, uh, what their what their relationships are with each other, and when you provide the chatbot with a prompt, it generates text based on those statistical models that it has built out of hundreds of millions of lines of ingested content. Uh, they are capable of doing some pretty amazing things. They appear to be very creative. Uh, if you give them a prompt, like I did once, as they tell me a story about a Martian that invaded my wine cellar, uh, it produced a credible and interesting and sometimes funny little story of about a thousand words or so. The problem that we have run into, however, is that uh, in its capacity to generate text, the systems are also capable of generating very convincing but uh, incorrect information. There's a technical term for this, it's called hallucination. And uh, if I were Sigmund Freud, I'd be telling you about the artificial id and the artificial ego and the absence of the artificial superego to control the impulses of the id and the ego. Uh, it is, however, an important problem to solve because the utility of these large language models is that they can retrieve information from the vast material that they've ingested. The problem is whether or not the information that they generate uh, is factual or not. And we can see, uh, just from various and sundry tests that we've done with these systems, that uh, the chatbots are capable of conflating factual information because they lack context. Uh, so as an example, uh, I, uh, I had one write an obituary for me, and in the course of generating a credible looking uh, format, uh, it uh, mistakenly uh, gave me credit for things other people did or it gave other people credit for things I did and it, it created family members that I don't think I have. So uh, the problem that we face right now is how to um, adapt these tools so that when they are uh, trained on factual information, they produce factual information as opposed to things that they've made up. So it, uh, this is still TBD uh, in terms of uh, engineering development, but I am convinced at this point that the tools are extremely useful, particularly if you're just looking to be entertained, but they might also be useful just for generating ideas, some of which uh, probably should be discarded for the same reason that monkeys typing on a typewriter have a lot of text that, that should be discarded as well. The question is whether we can automate the selection of the uh, generated text so that it turns out to be both valuable, valuable and factual. So this is still to be seen in the future. So uh, remember, uh, keep looking at the magazine and anticipating new stories of things that are of considerable interest to you and me and many others. Hi, I'm Tony Bishop from Digital Realty. I'm excited for the Interglobix third edition. This publication has brought many great stories and insights to life for the industry, it has put a spotlight on the data center and digital infrastructure industry that underpins our entire world. And I think you're gonna find some great stories in the current edition too. My name is Michael Elias. I'm an equity research analyst at the investment bank TD Cowan. I'm honored to be a contributor to Interglobix Magazine's third anniversary issue in which I discuss the implications of generative AI on the data center sector. Thank you to Vinay and Jasmine for all the work they do to promote the sector, and congratulations on all the success that Interglobix has had in such a short amount of time. I look forward to seeing many of you on the road through the remainder of this year and beyond. Hi, my name is Nicole Staroselsky, and I'm a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. I'm excited to be working with Suboptic Foundation to support the next generation of digital infrastructure workforce. There's a need, both inside universities and beyond them, to educate students in the fundamentals of subsea telecommunications networks. This might not sound as exciting as building the next big app, but I guarantee you, we are working to show students today that digital infrastructure not only involves working with cutting edge technology, which is the critical base for the internet, it is also a highly dynamic, global, challenging, and fun field to be in. At the Suboptic Foundation, we are building a curriculum, educational content, and outreach for students around the world. 
This article in Interglobix, which we are pleased to write, describes some of our efforts. We invite you to join us.